in my life, the Word of God. Everything filters through that lens. Everything in my social life, everything in my public life, everything uh, that I do or say, I try to filter it through the lens of Jesus Christ. So I was listening to, or watching rather, some of the President's address in front of the Congressional Black Caucus about his legacy and about how if we cared about his legacy uh, people would vote and I'm sure he was talking about voting democratic voting for uh, Mrs. Clinton but as a Christian as a follower of Jesus Christ I'm going to tell you what the legacy I believe Mr. Obama is leaving with America but let me lay a foundation first. Because as a Christian, there's certain things that we need to do. First and foremost, as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, verses 4. But he answered, because this is when the devil was trying to tempt him. He said, it is written, man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know, the Bible is not just some plaything. The Bible is not just something that we um, Christians use for decoration, prop up in our house, or take to church, you know, dust it off, take it to church on Sunday, and just read a little bit. The Bible is what we are supposed to live our life through and by. Every word of it. Therefore, like food, we're supposed to eat of it every day. President Obama came into office claiming that he was a Christian. But many of us didn't think that was the case. As a matter of fact, I, I never thought it was the case from the beginning because before he came in the office, he was for abortion, for killing babies in the womb. Unfortunately, many folks that say they're Christians were still for him. But in Psalms, chapter 139, verses 13 through 14, it says, For it was you who created my inward parts, speaking of God. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know this very well. So the psalmist was acknowledging that God created him, that God creates us all. And that we're wonderfully made by the power of God. Yet when the president, before he was president, was running for presidency, he even got in front of a bunch of pro-abortion people and stated that he didn't want his daughters, he wanted his daughters to know morals and everything, but he didn't want them uh, stuck with a baby. Now, can you imagine what that was? What he exactly what he said? If you go look up on YouTube, you can see the clip. He was basically saying, "I am willing to kill my grandchildren before my daughters, who are not even able to have children yet, can get pregnant." If a man is willing to sacrifice his own blood, his own blood when his daughters can't even get pregnant yet. Can he care about us? Can he care about our children or our grandchildren? And how can that person call himself a Christian? But that's not the legacy that I'm trying to say that Mr. Obama has left us. Because abortion has been around since 1973 in America. I'm not trying to say the Obamacare lie is his legacy that was supposed to reduce costs by $2,500 um, for a family of four and that you can keep your doctors which you can't no that wasn't his legacy either as far as I'm concerned there are a whole lot of things 
that he did. I mean, black as far as black people, 58% um, more black people are on food stamps now than the there were when he came in the office. There are more people in poverty now. Uh, his administration has spent more money than all the combined administrations from the beginning of our nation to now. Even that's not his legacy as far as I'm concerned. The legacy of this president, what he's going to be remembered for far after he's left office and once the dust settles, is the doors of apostasy he flung wide open. Many folks that say they're Christians have forgot the holiness of God. They forgot what God demands. I mean, when Moses looked upon the bush, when he was wanting to see God and he went up there on Mount Sinai, it said in Exodus 3 and 4, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, he answered. Do not come closer, he said. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Moses had to recognize the holiness of God before he got close to him. He had to take his shoes off. He was in the presence of the Most High. And Isaiah, Isaiah went up to the temple. In Isaiah chapter uh, 6, I thought I was there, but I wasn't. One second, and I will show you what he said. And I was, I, excuse me, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, and his robe filled the temple. Seraphans were standing above him. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face, and with two, covered his feet, and with two, he flew. And one called to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. His glory fills the whole temple. The foundations of the doorway shook at the sound of their voices, and the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and live among people of unclean lips, and because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, and in his hands was a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with thongs. He touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. Isaiah was in the presence of God, the majesty. He recognized his majesty. You know, when Jesus was crucified... <laughs> The temple was torn in half. We can boldly approach the crown of the throne of grace now. But many of us have taken him for granted. Many of us have walked into a field of apostasy. Many of us seem to have forgotten what the Lord has said. And our president has opened that door wide open with this same-sex marriage and this transgenderism and this homosexuality. In fact, if we want to get basically down to the point, he has repudiated Genesis chapter 1. If you take Genesis out of the Bible, you have nothing. What did God say in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27? He said, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, that they may rule the fish of the sea, birds of the air, the livestock, all the earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. 
can think about this. Of all the worlds, of all the creatures on this earth, God created man in his image. We are created in the image of the living God. And folks that call themselves Christians cannot grasp the, the holiness and the, the sacredness of that because they're falling away into apostasy by following a man and worrying about his legacy that's repudiating the very foundation of cre creation. I don't understand it. And it wasn't bad enough that he destroyed marriage in America. The 239 year history, about 239, 240 year of this nation and prior to it becoming a nation, marriage, the foundation of civilization for the last 6,000 years. He has ushered this in and there are still people that call themselves Christians that want to honor him, they should be reviled by him. They should be appalled of him. That is, of course, unless they're like atheists or someone that is not a Christian that doesn't care. But you cannot be a Christian. You cannot think of the holiness and the sacredness of God and not be totally offended. Christians should be marching on the streets of every state and every city and every capital of this nation against this invasion of decency. And when I'm saying the invasion of decency is beyond the destruction of marriage because now with this gender fluidity, with this transgenderism, with this appalling thinking that we can let men go into women's restrooms and vice versa and boys and girls locker room, we are spitting in the face of God. Those that are promoting this are spitting in his face and those that are passively accepting it are spitting in his face. And those that claim that they are followers of Jesus Christ and are uniformly just accepting this stuff, they are without shame. Without shame. They don't know the holiness of God. They don't serve the God of the Bible. The God they serve is a false God. Because you cannot serve the ball, the God of the Bible and put up with apostasy. You know, apostasy is a falling away. That's what it is. The Bible talks about there will be a great falling away. People will get teachers that will tickle their ears. They will listen to anything without the sacredness of the word of God. The foundation that God created the world when he created man, he created man and he created woman and he told us to be fruitful and multiply. Two men can't multiply. Two women can't multiply. What they can do is offend God. That's what they can do. Because God made us in his image. Grasp that. When we have our children, those children are made in our image. Now, I think that everybody loves their children. They love their children. I mean, normal people love their children. There, there, there is aberrant folks running around who don't care about their children. But most people love their children. And they want to do the best that they can for their children. And they want to prepare their children for the future. God is no different. We're God's children. And if we are God's children, and matter of fact, all of us are God's children, those that will obey him and those that won't. But those that won't, they will find themselves in hell and in a lake of fire for eternal damnation. Let's be clear. You cannot half-heartedly serve God and don't expect the judgment. The Bible says that every man should die and then the judgment. And... Let's even get closer. Judgment starts in the house of God. So you folks that got a Bible and that aren't really paying attention to what it says or just picking and choosing which parts of the Bible you will believe, there's hell to pay for that. There's hell to pay for that. Eternal damnation and separation from God. 
This is no joking matter. This is serious stuff. You know, when I was in the world, I was in the world. I concentrated on the world. I did what the world allowed me to do, and I tried to make the best of it. But when I came to the Lord, I got in the Lord. I concentrate on what the Lord says to do, and I'm making the best of it. I am running this race with everything that I have. And I don't care if I offend people. I mean, I don't want to offend folks, but if I offend folks, be offended. If it lines up with the word of God and you're offended, hey, take it up with God. Because one day you're going to meet him. Whether it's to get your rewards or whether it's a white throne judgment. One day, every knee will bow and every name, every voice will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So the thing to do is do it now. To do it now, to do it straight, to do it honestly, and to do it without compromise. We can't compromise, people. God doesn't care about this political correctness nonsense. God cares about obedience to his word. God cares about the fact that he came down and took on flesh. He let them beat the tar out of him, rip his back open, his whole body, put nails in his hands and feet, put a, a stupid crown of thorns on his head, spit on him, talk about him like a dog, nail him up there butt naked. He did all that, but he didn't do all that so we can compromise. He didn't do all that so we can sit around and watch the world go to hell in the handbasket and as Christians say nothing. He didn't do all that so we can worry about somebody's legacy that is destroying marriage and that is destroying male and female and then and, 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 and bringing in some kind of hybrid, apostate, evil, satanic mess. He called us to serve him. We have a choice. We can worry about President Obama's legacy. Or we can worry about the living God. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I would hope and pray that if you believe anything that the Bible says, you need to get in there and believe all that the Bible says. Because we don't know the day or time he's coming. But he's coming. And all this nonsense, all this prevarication, all this uh, compromise, all this apostasy, all these lies, all this deception, all this forces of evil against God will come to an end. And there ain't going to be no purgatory. There ain't going to be no, uh, well, God, you know my heart. Yeah, he knows your heart. It's full of evil. It's full of death. It's full of all kinds of vile wickedness. He knows all our hearts. That's why he gave us the heart of Jesus if we take it. There's no time to play, folks. This is serious business. This is serious biblical business. You're either for Jesus or you're not. There ain't no half step in here. It's all or nothing. So, that's my take on the president's legacy. May the Lord keep you and bless you as you follow him. This is Sam Tolley. I'm out. God bless you.